New tonight, it was a statement that shocked Californians and is still causing debate. New gas-powered cars cannot be sold in the state by 2035, and now Caltrans is adding hundreds of Teslas to their fleet. But it's all being paid for by taxpayers. To the point host Alex Bell is getting answers tonight. She went straight to Caltrans. They're hard to miss on California's 50,000 miles of roadways, but you might do a double take when you see the newest addition to Caltrans's fleet, Teslas. Are they a good use of taxpayer dollars? To find the answer, we went to Caltrans main artery, the division of equipment in East Sacramento. Robert Myers oversees the fleet. We, we purchase and produce the vehicles for the entire state of California and Caltrans. He says Caltrans has been transitioning their sedans and SUVs to electric vehicles decades before Governor Newsom's mandate. Caltrans purchased Toyota RAV4s all the way back in the year 2000. It's what started our transition into EVs. Caltrans says that their fleet consists of 12,000 vehicles. Their goal is to be all electric by 2035. Right now, 5% of their fleet is meeting that goal. 399 of those cars are Teslas. They were contracted to Caltrans in 2020, just days after state agencies were told to go all electric. And I've been told by your department that this Tesla purchase is the largest known EV fleet order from a government department. Can you confirm that? Um, I'm being told the same thing, so yes, it is. But why is Caltrans purchasing electric cars, including Teslas, now more than a decade away from the deadline. It takes a while to get there. You can't just flip the switch and say, I'm going to order, you know, 6,000 vehicles in a year because nobody can supply that many. Robert says it comes down to three factors, state contracts, availability, and cost. As for the Teslas? It was 52,000 apiece. Was that a good deal? Yeah, a smoking deal. I'm kind of surprised though. You said 52,000 for the Model 3s. That seems a little, little high. Is that electric vehicles are a little more expensive because of the batteries? And why did Caltrans specifically want to purchase Teslas compared to other EVs? We did not want to specifically purchase Teslas. It was merely because they were available and they were on state contract. State contracts are handled by the Department of General Services, also known as the state's business manager. They help agencies purchase goods and services. We filed a public records request with DGS. We found that currently there are 554 Tesla Model 3s active in the state's fleet. Caltrans owns 399. The California Department of Food and Agriculture owns seven and is leasing 33. The California Department of Public Health is leasing 30 and the Department of Social Services is leasing 17. Did other companies present contracts to Caltrans? So there's lots of contracts out there. The unfortunate part is that they weren't available. And these days it's hard to get vehicles. You probably have seen some of the car lots out there. There's not very many new vehicles sitting on them. And most people don't concentrate on fleet units. They concentrate on retail. So when we had an opportunity to buy vehicles at a fleet discounted rate, then we take advantage of that. The, the price is probably uh, comparable to some of the other vehicles that you see sitting here. When Caltrans cars have reached their life cycle, they are put up for auction. Caltrans gets the money back to reinvest into their fleet. The higher the resale value of a vehicle, the better off you are after its life expectancy. The 399 Teslas will primarily be used for administrative staff to go to meetings and visit field locations. Caltrans says due to the Tesla's five inch ground clearance, they can't be taken off road. Is that the most practical car for Caltrans uses? So Caltrans has a, a very diverse fleet. So we have a use for vehicle sedans. We have a use for pickups. We have a use for SUVs. We look at that and we say this is the most practical use. If it's a sedan, it was probably a six inch ground clearance before and now it's a five inch. So just don't take it off road. They shouldn't be taken off road anyway. We know that a lot of people right now in California, they're struggling. That's just a fact when it comes to inflation, when it comes to the cost of living, people are struggling in the state. So when residents see Caltrans driving Teslas on the road, what do you think that will say to taxpayers? Well, I'm hoping it says that Caltrans is leading the way because really what it comes down to is getting the volume of vehicles on the road so that there's resale markets for them in the future. You don't see a lot of them right now and the prices are really high. If government and city and local entities are embracing this technology and move it forward, then it's gonna lower the cost in the secondary market for all the people of California. Right now, Caltrans' primary focus is on swapping what's known as their light duty cars and SUVs for electric. But they've also been transitioning their larger fleet of cargo and plow trucks to greener alternatives. This facility actually 
builds and manufactures all the vehicles heavy duty fleet for a Caltrans fleet. Caltrans has got a goal of being the greenest fleet in the nation. Which means they'll be installing more of these. But can California's electric grid keep up? We're actually looking at some new technology. You might have heard of uh, vehicle to grid technology. The battery packs actually will put power back into the grid. California has had its share of rolling outages and natural disasters that have cut electric supply. Well, we have generators at our locations, so the generators would actually come on. We also use solar chargers in some locations too. A common environmental concern with EVs are their batteries, partially because of the materials used to make them and how hard they are to recycle. What are Caltrans plans to recycle some of those batteries and where would they go? So right now we're not going to recycle batteries. What we're going to do is sell the vehicle and put it in the secondary market so the people that other people could use them for longer. That's that's Caltrans's plan now. The governor's got some ambitious goals, you know, change the the footprint of California as far as the greenhouse gas emissions go. And I think we're really on the right path to do that. Do you think you'll reach it by 2035? That's my goal. But Caltrans is now watching the state budget debate with the deficit. The governor's new guidelines prevent state agencies from adding to their fleets. You can read more about the purchases on our website, abc10.com.